This is a collection of jewelry in gold that has enormous sentimental value for my client. Now, they don't wear the jewelry and it kind of just sits around, so they've made the decision to have me recreate this jewelry into something new and special the family can enjoy. So I'm going to start by melting the jewelry down into shot, and I'm going to skip a step on here because it gets pretty repetitive, but I turn this jewelry into shot, and then what I did is I combined it with another 975 grams of silver and melted it down, went through this process again, and turned that into shot. And uh, here's the original batch going through. All right. And there it is, all compressed into uh, a nice little batch here. So then I combine that 975 grams of silver, and here we and I report it into shot, and here's what we have. Now what that did is it created a lattice work within this shot that basically makes it so it's 25% gold, and the rest 75% is base metal, and that makes the gold thin enough because nitric acid won't penetrate. Uh, gold, but it will penetrate and dig out those base metals. So what that does is it makes it thin enough that that nitric acid can get in there and draw off the silver and copper. Now that blue that you see is actually the copper going into solution. Now I added distilled water. I just added uh, nitric acid, and you see every time I do that, the reaction begins again. When I feel the uh, sol solution is saturated enough, I pour it off to the side here and start over again. More distilled water, more nitric acid, more of those toxic NOx fumes coming off of here. This isn't something you want to do at home without a lot of study first. Um, and here we go. We, here we take a closer look here. Uh, the gold is staying put, but the silver and the copper, those base metals, are getting pulled off and dragged into the solution. Every time uh, I feel the solution saturated enough, I pour it off to the side. And then we just begin again. All right, more distilled water, more nitric acid. It gets pretty repetitive, uh, but there's no way around it. There's no cutting corners with this. Otherwise, you just have to start over in the end because your product won't be as clean, as pure as you need it. All right, it's starting to tinge a bit brown now. That's that gold staying put. All right, and. And as I'm pouring off these base metals, I'm getting quite a collection of silver in this pot here, in this uh, beaker. So I introduced copper rods here, and that copper reacts with the silver nitrate in the, in the solution, dropping the silver out. So as I'm pouring, pulling the silver off of, our, off of our shot, I'm dumping it into this other beaker. Uh, once that reaction's over, I siphoned off some of the uh, remaining solution so I can make room for... Uh, for the remaining stuff here. And then I'll introduce those copper pipes back into that again and just keep dropping that silver out as I go. All right, here's some more distilled water. Shake it around, clean. <laughs> and uh, I'll add a bit more nitric acid and we'll give this another round. All right, give it a good swirl again so it's nice and mixed up and back on the heat it goes. I'll get that up to a boil and uh, see if we get any color to come out. Now as I go and pour this off, you'll see just a tinge of color yet. Now some of that could have been dragged off from the solution before, um, but I, I think we're getting really close here. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to rinse this uh, silver sponge basically is what we have now and try to get all that remaining solution out as best as I can. I think I only show it like two, three, four times here, but in reality, I rinsed it off about 12 times. Get the water in there so it's all covered, shake it around good, get it up to a boil, let it cool, pour it off. Very repetitive, but it's really tough to get that old solution off of there. It's deep into the pores. And now I'm adding hydrochloric acid, and you see that reaction. Immediately it turns yellow, which is an indicator that there are still free nitrates, and that gold immediately went into, re uh, into solution. We saw that white frothiness in the beginning. That was a reaction to the traces of silver that was still in solution. So now I already know I, I have traces of base metals in there that I, I have to get out. Now we added the hydrochloric acid. Now I just added nitric acid, 
and here we have aqua regia now here we have more of those nox fumes coming off of here and uh, we see the gold going into solution and as the reaction stops i let it cool and then i add more nitric acid get that heat going again and we see our reaction continue to go and boom it can get uh, it can get uh, pretty aggressive all right we get those poisonous fumes on here i gotta stress that because uh, i get a lot of stuff like oh i'd like to do this at home tell me how you're gonna have a couple years worth of study to do before you get to that point all right here we're gonna drop this gold out of solution and I added sodium metabisulfite, or SMB, which reacts to the gold in solution, dropping it selectively out. And we're left with this uh, bit of sediment here. I go through a series of rinse procedures, um, and we're left with this. And here we go. I, I just added more hydrochloric acid. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this gold sponge back into solution again. Here we have concentrated nitric acid, and we're going to introduce that into our solution get that heat going and here we go we already start to see the gold going back into solution again and why i do it twice is because i i know i have these trace elements getting dragged along and if i do it twice i can pretty much guarantee that i pull the vast majority of all that out of there all right there's a, a very aggressive reaction here and uh, as the gold goes into solution it takes a while because i don't want too much free nitrates in there so i just let it go and and uh, we're left with this beautiful orange solution here that i need to filter out we want it to be crystal clear in the end and there's still going to be here we see particles of like lead uh, silver uh, chlorides that might have formed and we want to filter all that out of here and now we're left with a nice crystal clear solution all right, I'm going to add more ice to this because this is an exothermic reaction. That means it gets pretty hot when I introduce that SMB. And uh, the hotter it is, the more particles will float on top and kind of cling to the sides, and it gets kind of messy. All right, I add the SMB, the sodium metabisulfite. We see our reaction, the gold dropping selectively out of solution, leaving any traces of base metal still in the solution. Stir it up test it make sure all the gold is out of solution and I give it time to settle after it cools down a little bit that settlement starts to fall and then I turn the heat back on and that forces the remaining sediments to drop and they start to bind with each other down at the bottom all right give that a little time and it's very clean looking if you if, if you've done this for a little while, you can tell the difference between a, a very clean, pure sponge and one with still uh, traces of base metals in it. All right, but now I'm going to have to go through a series of rinse procedures to get all that old solution off of there. Uh, that solution contains those base metals. So if I let that solution dry and leave those traces behind, I'll be polluting my gold again. So here we go, I go through uh, hydrochloric acid, distilled water, ammonia, more distilled water, and we're left with this beautiful precipitated gold. Now right in the beaker, I'm going to dry it off, and you see all that stuff clinging to the sides? That's all gold clinging to the sides. And as it dries, that's my indicator that uh, it's the moisture starting to get out of there. Well, I'll see all that stuff clinging to the sides start to fall, and that tells me there's not enough moisture to support that uh, to cling on there like that so once the precipitated gold powder is uh, all dried here's what we're left with all right I poured it off into a dish and here we have it nice bright clumpy very nice all right we're gonna get this into a melt dish now I sped it up but I was very very careful not to spill any bit all right let's get this melted down now watch what happens when the flame hits that powdered gold now we start to see that metallic shine that we're all familiar with when we think of gold. It's gorgeous. I love watching that stuff melt down. It's such a trip. All right, obviously there wasn't enough room to fit it all in in one go, so I have to go through this again here, and we get to see that shine develop here. Gorgeous. All right, beautiful, clean gold. I pushed it off to the side so you can see me do this here. I'm going to pour this into shots, and... Uh, We'll get a, get a weight here and see, see what we have. Now, folks ask me uh, quite often, 
why don't you uh, pour it directly into a bar instead of pouring into a shot and then a bar? Well, I want to take the total weight here. I want to calculate what it is, and we have 10.444 ounces-ish, a little just under 10.5 ounces. But I don't want to pour a 10.5 ounce bar. I want to pour a 10 ounce bar. So now I re-measured it, got precisely 10 ounces. I, I go just a hair over just to make sure. Uh, and now, now I'm going to re-pour it into a bar. Because uh, I don't want to have a bunch of odd bars. I want to have precision here. All right, fire up the torch. We'll heat up this dish. And uh, let's melt down this gold. I got to heat up the uh, mold as well. I need that around 600, 600 degrees to pour it safely. All right. Here we go. We'll have a nice smooth pour here. Nice and hot. Perfect. All right. We'll get some nice ripples to form. Center it off nicely. And here we are. Pretty close to perfection right there. It is gorgeous. We'll take a closer look here in just a minute. It's super hot. Got to be careful not to touch it. I don't want to scratch that surface. It has like a mirror finish on that surface, so you got to be real careful. Uh, flip it over, protect it. All right, get a good grip on it here, and we'll cool it down. Nice. All right. And now we're all set up to uh, switch over and get this bar stamped up. I often use these filters to block the glare of the light so I can see the bar redder, uh, better. Uh, I want to be able to see clearly and, and uh, arrange the bar in the best direction possible. So we'll get it stamped up. we get that lithic stamp on there. And now I'm going to go through the series here. It's always a bit nerve-wracking. I don't want to scratch that surface. I want to get these stamps laid out as uh, best as possible. It's nerve-wracking you don't want to mess it up and start over all right we'll take a quick look at it and we have a nice beautiful new lithic 10 ounce gold bar not too shabby all right all right let's get uh, a weight on it here I didn't have the camera set up right but here we go just a little bit over 10 ounces fresh beautiful bar and let's get the certificate of authenticity signed this is the certificate that verifies what it is and that if any third party tests it, this is what they're going to find. I stand by that guaranteed. All right, we'll get a lithic sticker on there, and it is official. Beautiful new 10-ounce gold bar. Hope you like it. Hit that subscribe button, give me a like, and I'll see you next time.